and uh, welcome to another video from West Networks. Today we're going to be talking about KVM virtualization inside of an EPX. And so what we want to do is deploy KVM virtual hypervisor uh, virtual machines inside of an EPX or SDX Pro. So for my demo unit, I have an EPX and it is installed uh, and online. So if I open up my browser and go to the local IP address. So I, I have it online. You want to make sure you have a hard drive installed. So if you go to system, storage manager, and you can configure your storage right here. So you can click configure, and you can see I've got 782 gigabytes assigned to KVM, 100 gigabytes assigned to Docker, 69 gigabytes assigned to Content Hub, and zero for MediaFast. And you got to click format. It'll say format required. Then go to network, KVM, check the box, and hit save. You need to have Ubuntu or some Linux OS with the virtual machine manager. So I don't have that on my Windows PC. So I create an enabled hypervisor, Hyper-V. And I'm building a Windows or an Ubuntu uh, machine right here. So I just went to Ubuntu, downloaded the ISO, installed Hyper-V Manager, and I'm setting up the image right now. So that's going to set us up for deploying and managing these machines. If you have an SDX Pro or 2500 EC, that's going to come with a hard drive built in. The SDX Pro comes with a 512 gig SSD, and the 2500 EC comes with a one terabyte SSD. Um, my EPX, I installed a one terabyte SSD into the unit. I just popped out the LCD module and installed a one terabyte drive. Okay, Ubuntu is installed. I'm just going to click restart media, just drive, eject. Okay, my, my Ubuntu is set up. Now I'm just going to go to the package manager and I'm just going to hit search. Virtual machine. Is this right here? Virtual Machine Manager, this little VM logo right there. Click that, click install. Okay, my Virtual Machine Manager is installed. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the uh, apps here, open up Virtual Machine Manager. And if you have anything listed here, delete it. So if you have anything listed right here, just delete it. Then you're gonna go File, Add Connection. And I just do custom URL. Um, so you see it's QEMU plus TCP and then um, slash slash admin at your IP address 172.16.253.1 and then forward slash system. So it's QEMU plus TCP colon forward slash forward slash your username at the IP address of your router forward slash system. Hit connect put in your credentials to the router, same, same as you would if you were logging into the router, and then you can open the Virtual Machine Manager. You're gonna to wanna to download your uh, ISO, like your Windows Server ISO, uh, or Windows 10 Desktop ISO, et cetera, um, to your local machine. Then click the File Manager. So I need to upload my ISO to here. So I'm gonna open my browser or my desktop here, go to my Downloads, Grab my Windows Server here. I'm going to shorten it just for for sake here. Windows Server 2022, and drag it here, and it's going to upload this file. Just wait for my uh, Windows Server ISO to upload. I got my Virtual Machine Manager connected to the the router, and so just waiting for that. We'll start making the server. You can see my download usage right there over my three HD1 domes about 100 megabits per second. So that's, that was kind of cool to see. And there's my file uploading. While I was waiting, I went ahead and updated my uh, my Ubuntu VM from the uh, Ubuntu store and installed Microsoft Edge. I'm, I'm a Microsoft guy and installing Microsoft Server. So I thought that would be kind of funny. It's a little fun entertainment. I'm just messing around with this little Ubuntu VM. And I noticed that Microsoft Edge has a uh, a Linux flavor. There you go. Running Microsoft Edge. That's kind of fun. Okay, so my server ISO has been loaded. I'm connected to my VM. So now I'm just going to click New 
I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm connected to the KVM hypervisor. So now I'm just going to click uh, new virtual machine and I'm, local media, hit next, select my, my drive, my ISO, click browse, and you'll see right there, there's my server 22, 2022 ISO, choose volume. And it's going to ask me um, what operating system. You can actually just right here, type in Microsoft Windows. Look at this, 2022. Boom. Hit forward. Um, I'm going to do uh, 4096. And you'll see I've got 16 gigs available on my EPX. So I'm going to get four gigs of RAM. And I've got eight processors. I'm going to give it two. Hit next. I'm going to give it a, a, a 60 gigabytes of storage out of my 769 available. Click next. Now here, bridge device. This is important. The bridge names needs to be BR0. That's the hypervisor Ethernet switch that's enabled on the servers. It has to be BR0. And then this, uh, there's a checkbox here, customize configuration before install. You got to check that. Hit finish. So now we want to go to NIC. Make sure it's E1000 and it's on BR0, which it is. Display VNC, VNC server address, all interfaces. And you have to, at least mine, this app is running inside this thing. So if you have to shrink this down a little bit, there we go. And there's my apply button. And then console gets removed. Yes. And then display VGA gets changed to Vertio and apply changes. And then begin installation. Listen, there we go. And you'll see it loading. And we should, if I refresh over here, there's my Windows Server. And then next install I'm going to do standard desktop experience just so that you can kind of see it normally you would do like a server core let me just maximize this accept so this is installing windows server on an epx i i know like it doesn't look like much from here but i mean that that's pretty cool getting files ready and it's going to install okay so there's my windows machine loaded up i'm going to give it a password here And once I give it a password and log in, I should be able to enable um, remote desktop services. So let me just turn on remote desktop real fast. So if I go to my status of my EPX, I should be able to go to client list and see my Windows Server connected. There it is right there. Okay, so I've got remote desktop enabled on my server and I'm connected to this virtual machine. Now I'm using Ubuntu right now. So if I close out of the virtual desktop here, remote desktop, and I'm just back in my machine manager, so now that I'm in the machine manager, I can see my, my VM. I can actually create another VM. Like I could create a Windows 10 VM or a, an Ubuntu VM or something else. And then, um, and now this virtual machine manager on Ubuntu is used to manage this. So if I reboot the EPX, you're gonna need to come back in here and you're gonna see this as stopped instead of started. But I wanna be able to access this Windows box. Now I can use either like route remote server admin tools or I can, use something else but i wanted to show off the ability to do this with uh in control so if i open up in control and go to my group i'll have my epx right here um, i'm using my peplink tech summit demo epx um, so i'm going to click on this device here and i can go to settings in touch or i can go to clients uh, so if you don't know the ip address so for example i can go to clients and i would see my windows server i can click this in touch button and it asks you, what do you want to do? And I can say, I want to do an RDP session, administrator, and hit OK. And there it is, save. 
or I could have gone settings in touch and then brought this up and then just click add. So, so here's my server 2022 in touch. Now, if I go back to the Peplink Tech Summit group and I scroll down to the bottom, there's my Windows Server 2022 RDP. So I can click on this. And so now I'm logging into this Server 2022 via the RDP protocol using InTouch through InControl for secure access in, in my web browser. And now I can log into this device. So uh, one thing to be note is this is still in an early phase of the technology. So if you reboot the Peplink router, um, this device will not, the VMs will not start back up right now. So you want to make sure that you have this virtual machine manager on your laptop or desktop or however you're managing this environment so you can see that machine started back up. And then the, uh, the tools inside Peplink are limited right now. So hopefully we're going to see some more tools. Basically all you have, if you go to KVM, is simply the, the ability to turn it on and then upload files to the file manager. Everything else needs to be done inside the virtual machine manager in a Linux box. So that's where we are with that. And then if you have any questions, let us know. And if there's updates to the technology, I will append that. So thank you very much and have a great day.